Okay, um, so let's start in lab 8. So let's create a new map project and let's call it lab 8. And we're going to once again save that one to our OneDrive folder on AppStream. And so let's call it uh, create new folder. Uh, let's call it lab 8. So most of the analysis are similar as we did in the lecture. So, but in this lab, um, we're going to find out um, a place that uh, meets specific criteria. So we want to find a place that where it is far away from a um, uh, place that uh, have a high elevation and also we want to find a place that is flat we want to find out a place that has uh, more vegetations and also uh, the aspect is towards the east okay and our case study is still in Harrisonburg so first uh, let's download the data for this lab so let's go to portal and we need two data set one is DEM uh, for Harrisonburg Okay, so that is already provided um, and make sure that the owner is my username WEIXX and score GMU. Okay, so let's drag that one to our data set. Uh, the second data set is a land set image. So here we have the DEM. Uh, so let's also type land set uh, Harrisonburg. Land set uh, Harrisonburg. Okay, um, there are two results. Uh, so we are going to use the second one. So that is a uh, layer. So land set Harrisonburg. Uh, the first one is a zip file, which is a land set eight products. So uh, if you want to use this one, you need to go to ArcGIS Online and download that zip file. However, this one we can just use it directly. So let's drag that one to our um, map as well. Okay, and the next, uh, let's export those two uh, images to our local uh, geo database. Right now, you can see our geo database is empty. So, let's export the first one. Let's export the raster. Uh, let's see. Make sure we export to our geo database. Uh, geo database can store vector data and also can store the rust data okay uh, so that is lab 8 geo database and we can call it uh, landsat okay and we are using this utm zoom not 17 so that is pcs that is where harrisonburg is located okay and we keep everything as default and we export uh, okay now we can see that has been exported successfully so if now we refresh our um, database we should be able to see the landsat image okay it is here and if you expand and you will see there are uh, multiple bands that uh, in that landsat uh, image data set okay so actually um, eight bands and now we can remove this one that downloaded from the portal and actually you can do analysis on those uh, downloaded data set uh, but I just prefer that organize everything in the um, in our geo database and let's do the same thing for the uh, DM Okay, uh, so let's say we want also want to save the data set in our geo database and let's call it DEM in the geo database. You can try to save that in the folder if you like. Uh, um, um, but here I, 
I, I, I prefer using GeoDatabase. Uh, for the coordination system, uh, you can see that this is using a GCS. So let's give it a PCS. So let's say we want you the same coordination system as uh, the Landsat image, which is using an UTM uh, not 17. And we click export. OK, and that is also success. And again, if we go to the category and we refresh the database, and we all see that both DEM and also Landsat are being exported. Uh, for the DEM, there's only one band. So that is a band that contains um, the information about the height. Um, and also Landsat, there are eight bands. OK, uh, so let's remove the DEM that downloaded from ArcGIS portal. OK, uh, so now we have the Landsat image and also we have the DEM. Uh, so if you remember that, as we said, for the Landsat, you can always go to data and you can create, uh, check the spectral profile. OK, where you can see the reflections of different objects. Uh, let me, yeah. So reflection of different objects in multiple uh, wavelengths range. Um, you can also change the colors. So if we go to uh, the appearance and also band information, uh, you can try to use create a natural color, or you can try to use um, uh, that is a color infrared so or false color image. OK, and we can see here, actually, this is not a false color image because uh, we only know the band names. But um, uh, ArcGIS apparently made a mistake. So the red uh, band, also green, and also blue, they use a the wrong band. So however, if we go to USGIS, uh, USGS website, sorry, and if we check the Landsat band information, we see that band 3 is green. Uh, 4 is red and also 5 is near infrared. Okay, so 5 is near infrared, 4 is red and also 3 is green. So we can go to um, Access Pro and also click band combination and we can also customize that one. So here, let's say that red we are using the near infrared and green will be the band 4 and also blue will be the band 3. And we can give it false color combination. OK, and now we will have a false color image. So like here. OK. And we can also go back to our uh, natural color image. So that is the default setting. So for natural color, uh, red will fall band green will be band 3, blue actually is band 2. So that is a natural color. OK, uh, so now we have a natural color. OK, and also we have a false color. Uh, so the default natural color and also false color are not accurate uh, because uh, when we exported the, the land set to our data set, we kind of lost the metadata. So that we didn't contain that which the band information. So we only have the band wavelengths. OK, uh, so now we have the uh, land set and also DEM. Our first criteria is that we want to have places that have more vegetation. OK, uh, so, so if we go to the imagery and we know that we can calculate a lot of different indexes and NDVI is the one that uh, measures the number of the, the bell mass. So if you have high values of NDVI, that normally means that you have more vegetations. So you can calculate NDVI from the indexes, or you can just open this Rust function, and where you can find out the calculation of NDVI as well. So let's click Calculate NDVI. And the Rust, the input will be the Landsat. OK. 
Um, and here they are asking, so what is the red band information? So normally that was band three. Okay, and also near infrared is band four. Okay, as you can check that, oh, sorry. Uh, the band 4 is red and also band 5 is near infrared okay um, so red is band 4 and also near infrared is band 5 okay and now we have the NDVI uh, ready so let's run it okay and now we have the NDVI uh, and let's change the color of the NDVI um, result indexes. So let's select the NDVI and also go to the appearance. Um, here let's choose classify because we have continuous data. Okay, and let's choose a green color. So because the high values indicate uh, more um, vegetations. So let's choose a green color. Okay, and so now you can see the places that are dark green will have more um, vegetations. And you can compare this one with the natural color of the Landsat image and looks like that is accurate. We can see with roads and also the buildings will have lower NDVI results. Okay, uh, so that first one. Uh, and we can also remove the Landsat. Okay. Uh, okay, so now that is NDVI. Uh, next, we also uh, care about the slope and also um, the aspect. So we want the place that is flat and also we want the place where uh, the land, uh, the aspect is toward the east. So let's calculate the slope and also aspect. Again, let's go to the Rust functions. Uh, you can find that uh, from the imagery raster, or you can go to the analysis. From that, you can find out the Rust functions. And in the Rust functions at the bottom, so we will find out the service analysis. So let's calculate the aspect where it requires the DEM. OK, and let's run it. Okay, uh, so now we have the aspect. Um, here we can see it. The 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 results range from zero to three hundred and sixty, where zero indicate true uh, north, one hundred eighty indicate uh, uh, south. Negative zero probably means that um, we have none data in those areas. Uh, so we can change the appearance. So go to the symbology and we can choose a vector field where we can use uh, for magnitude we use none for the direction we use band one so that indicates the, the the aspect and if you zoom in and we can see for each single cell it has a calculated direction or the aspect okay um, However, we are talking. We are looking for the um, places that towards the east. So we need to, uh, to do a reclassification so that we can filter out the places that towards east and also towards the west. So let's go to the Rust function and let's uh, search reclassify. Okay, it's already here. Um, it's called. Uh, remap and let's bring the aspect okay and here we want the east uh, to be um, we want to distinguish from east and west so let's say from 0 to 180 we want the result to be 1 so that uh, and also for the value from 180 to um, 360 we want the value to be zero and for the other ranges we just want that to be non-data and now let's reclassify the result okay uh, so now we have those uh, reclassified results 
So let's change the symbol to be unique values because we only have two result, two values. Um, so in this case, a pink means that it that towards the east and also um, the green in this case indicate that towards the west. So let's move put the original aspect on a, uh, above the reclassified and let's zoom in see if that is the case. Okay, so now you can see if the aspect towards east so that is uh, in the number one, it has number one and also if that aspect is towards west, the value is number zero. Okay, that's great. And so now I'm going to remove the aspect because we no longer need that one. We have our um, classified aspect that is uh, the data that we really need. So if the result is one that meet our standard uh, that criteria, if the, re if the value is zero, that does not meet our criteria. Okay, our another criteria is that the result should the, the place should be located on the flat place so that we want a low slope. So to do that we once again we go to the rust function. We can just search slope and we need to bring our DM. So for the slope uh, let's choose percentile raise percent rise and let's create a slope. Okay, uh, so now here we have the slope and again let's change the color. Okay, so we can see that if those are blue or red colors, that means they are more, uh, the slope is higher and also those are not flat. And if those areas that are lower, uh, those uh, bright yellows, so those are the places that slope is lower. Okay, so that means that it's pretty uh, low, uh, pretty flat. Okay, uh, so let's say we want the flat area. Let's say that we set criteria that we want area where slope is less than 3% rise. Okay, uh, you may already know, you may guess that, okay, so we need to reclassify the the result of slope analysis. So reclassify and here we bring the slope and here we see okay so if the result is beneath three that's great and we want to keep it and we don't want this one so you can click this delete icon And if that is above three, and we want the result to be zero. Okay, so that is our reclassify um, rules. So if that is below three, that flight, we will want that output to be one, otherwise that will be zero. Again, we want the missing value to be non-data. And let's create a new layer. And we have this reclassified slope, and let's uh, change the color. Okay, so if it is in green, so that means that it's on the flat place. If that is on purple, so that means it's not on the, uh, the place that meet our criteria. So now let's remove the slope. We just uh, we just contain the reclassified slope and also reclassified um, uh, aspect. Okay, so that it reclassified slope and reclassified aspect. Okay, um, so here so we want the place that is definitely that is located on um, the slope that value is one and also the aspect that value is one. Okay, so that so we kind of want an intersect that the value will be one on both rust data. So to do that selection, we can use a calculation or we can use a mass. Okay, so if we go to the rust calculation functions, 
and if we go to the math okay and we can see arithmetic here let's say we want the reclassified slope to multiple the reclassified okay so multiply the reclassified aspect and so that calculation will be cell by cell so if the cell has zero on any of those clusters the result will be zero if the cell has value of one on both rasters data on layers the output will be one okay so if the cell has value one on both slope and those aspect reclassified the output for that cell will be one and that is the place that we want okay so let's create a new layer all right and let's change the color of this result let's give it a unique value okay so now we kind of have done an intersect you can see that now the green areas are smaller so those are the places that uh, slope is uh, beneath three percent rise and also aspect is towards the east Okay, so those are the suitable places that meet those two standards. So let's uh, rename this layer, let's say slope and aspect, okay. And now let's remove the reclassified slope and also aspect. Okay, so now we have identified the place that meet the slope um, criteria and also aspect criteria. Uh, we also have the result of the NDVI. Okay, so that means that high values indicate that um, they are all uh, vegetation, more vegetations. Our last criteria is that we want far away from places that is above 500 meters. Okay, we want a place that is far away from 500 meters. So to do that, we need to select uh, the places that is above 500 meters, which once again, we need a uh, reclassify. Okay, and let's say we want the DM. Okay, and we, so we want places that is above 500. So that's everything that is uh, beneath zero to 500 and the output will be non non data however if the elevation is above 500 until so we can see the maximum is 525 let's see 525 we want that result to be one okay so here it's it's like we're doing a selection okay so if the the place the elevation is above 500 we keep that result otherwise we just set that one into non data okay and let's create a, a new layer all right so if we uncheck the dm and we give it a new symbol Okay, so we have two places. One is number one and one is uh, 525. And I guess I might did something wrong in a previous step. Uh, so what we can do is that we can go to the analysis and we can go to the history. history. So let's remove that and go to the history. And again, for the Rust analysis, okay, so the Rust functions, we can just double click and we can call our previous analysis. Okay, uh, so let's see this one, let's give it even higher value. So say 600. And we're going to change the missing values into no data. Okay, and now let's do it again. Okay, so here we have uh, 
the places that are above 500. And let's change the color. Yes, and let's give it a red color. And we call it above 500. Okay, so just simply click above 500. Okay, and now let's remove the DM. So I want to make the analysis as, wait, I want to keep the, the contents as simple as possible so that now we have this above 500. So we, as I said, we want to have places that is far away from this uh, from these high locations. So to identify the places that are far away from those locations, and we can calculate the distance. So here you can see there are several type of distances. Let's just choose this one. Okay, uh, so Euclidean distance. And the source will be the place that is above 500 and we leave everything as default okay and we don't have the uh, rust berries so that means we can build the place anywhere within this start area uh, let's create that layer okay so now we have this result uh, so if you remember it's 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 like buffers in the vector data analysis so let's put about 500 on the top and let's give the a distance a different color. So let's say classify. Okay, uh, let's use a slightly different color. Okay, so now you can see it's, it's like a buffer that we created uh, in the vector data, but this is for the um, Rust data. We can see that, uh, so as you go further away from this source, you can see the distance will increase. Okay, so starting from 7,000, <coughs> starting from actually almost uh, 2,000 meters until 7,000 meters. Okay, uh, so now let's remove this one. So now what we have right now, so first we have the distance map that the higher the value is, it will be far away from this uh, place that elevation is about 500 so that we want our uh, we want our uh, location will be far away from this place so that we want the final site will be located on the cells that have high values on this cell we also want the site to to be located on the uh, have more and vegetations so that means we also want the site to be on the location where have also high values on the uh, NDVR index and finally we want that site to be located exactly on those um, cells that the value is one because those cells that have value one are the location that is flat and also towards the east direction aspect Okay, so those are the criteria. So now we have all the data ready. Uh, so we can design our calculation for this suitability map. Uh, so we, are, we still need to use a mass. So let's go to the mass. <coughs> and in this case, we are going to use a calculator. Okay. Uh, so let's bring first one. So let's bring the distance. And let's call it distance. The second one, uh, let's bring the NDVI. And let's call it NDVI. Uh, NI. Yes, NDVI. The third one is uh, slope and loss aspect. So let's call it slope and aspect okay so here we need to uh, define our calculation so how do you want to formulate the final result so we want the value to be higher distance and not high NDVI um, and also we want 
the, the slope and also aspect the value to locate to be the value that on the one so so here a simple one is that we can say okay distance plus ndvi and the final result we are times uh, so this should be let's call it slope okay times slope aspect okay and this will work actually yes this will work uh, however you will see that distance the range of the distance is from 2000 until 9000 however for the ndvis it is from 100 to 158 okay so they are not on the same scales so here you have to consider okay so how do you want balance um, the difference in terms of the scales of the measures and also uh, which one do you care more about so do you prefer a longer distance or do you prefer a high ndvi values okay so here you can you can change a little bit in this um, formula so here i see i prefer the ndvi so i will give ndvi a high weight a boost so that I will say that okay NDVI need to mm, times 10 and then plus distance and next the result will plus with slope so because slope has only zero or one okay um, okay so here this is my solution and you can use your own solutions as long as you think that will make sense or you think that with your domain knowledge your expertise you think that is the best uh, formula to determine the suitable loca the suitable locations okay and finally let's calculate and have our final result that will be the suitable areas okay uh, so here comes our result and we can see we have many places have zero that is because they located on the zero values of the slope aspect raster data set and the other values they have uh, a very high value from zero to almost uh, six thousand okay so let's change the color a little bit last time um, uh, yeah so this is where you can you can choose the one the color that you like so let's say I prefer this one <coughs> Uh, pr probably not um, okay this one okay uh, so now you can see this is my suitability map so here you can see the green areas are the place that we should not consider at all um, because um, they are located on the places that does not meet our criteria and we should look at those brown areas because those are the areas that are far away from this place and also have high ndvi values okay so this is a, a very simple uh, project that uh, to identify the suitable places through a set of those rust data analysis tools